Hello, this tutorial will show you how to create your first Google AdWords campaign. The first thing we want to look at are keywords. Keywords are the main drivers for Google AdWords and the way this works is that when someone searches for a particular term or search phrase on Google, a number of ads go into an auction behind the scenes and Google looks at a number of different factors and ranks those ads accordingly and then shows them on that search results page. So what we want to try to do is find keywords that will help us to rank on that page. So the first thing we want to look at is our landing page. This is where people will end up when they click on our ad. What we want to think about is what keywords will people type in to make our ad pop up so that they can get to this landing page. So we want to think about what this landing page is actually about. This landing page happens to be about do-it-yourself wedding invitations. And if you look down here at the bottom, there's some, some keyword ideas already in place. Premium invitation kits, free invitation templates, etc. Things that have to do with do-it-yourself invitations. So that's the first thing we want to think about is what do we want people to type in that will get them to click on our ad that will get them to this landing page. So as we start our keyword research, we want to go to the Keyword Planner. And if you click on Tools there at the top, and then Keyword Planner, that will open up the Keyword Planner. And then you're going to click on Search for New Keyword and Ad Group Ideas. So here in this first box that says Your Product or Service, we're going to type in just an example keyword. So we're going to type in Do-It-Yourself Wedding Invitations. And then we're going to click Get Ideas down here. And this is going to give us a whole list of different keyword options. Now, for the moment, we won't worry about ad group ideas. So if you click on the Keyword Ideas tab, that will give you a number of different keywords that are very closely related to the keyword phrase that you initially typed in. There's a couple things we want to look at here. We want to look at the average monthly searches. That's how many people are searching for this keyword or keyword phrase in any given month. We want to look at how competitive that keyword is, how many other bidders there are for it. And if it's high, there's probably a lot. And if it's medium, there's not as many. We want to look for medium and low keyword competition. The next thing we want to look at is the bid. Um, for this purposes of this campaign, we probably want to bid at something a dollar or less. So one way we can help ourselves is if you click on the word competition here, it will rank it either from highest to lowest. If you click it again, it will rank it from lowest to highest. And if we can find a keyword that has a high number of monthly searches, a low competition, and our bid that is below a dollar, then we're doing pretty well. So if we look for some of those keywords, um, I'm just going to add a couple. What we want to do is when we find those keywords is click on this little blue arrow over here to the right. And I'm just going to find a couple more here. Okay, and now the other thing you can do is change this keyword phrase at the top. Um, for example, if you wanted to type in free wedding templates and do a search for keywords related to that, that would be fine too. And again, this will give you a whole set of keywords to look through. So once you've found some keywords, you go over here to the right and click Review Forecasts. And then you click up here in the upper right corner, Save to Account. Add to an existing ad group. And you're going to find your name in the list. And you're going to select that ad group. And I think everyone should have an ad group called Ad Group Number 1. Then you'll click Save and Continue. 
The other thing you want to think about in doing your keyword research is to make sure that your keywords are very tightly themed. So for example, if you're searching for do-it-yourself invitation type keywords, you want to make sure all your keywords are related to do-it-yourself. Okay, if we go back to the campaign interface and we choose our actual campaign, and then we click on keywords, we can see that our keywords have shown up here in our actual campaign. Now one other thing I want to talk about just very quickly in doing keyword research is the difference between short tail and long tail keywords. Short tail keywords are usually one word keywords or two word keywords, invitations or wedding invitations. And the problem with these is so many people search for these that you'll get a very wide range but you'll also get a lot of clicks that you don't really want. We have a very specific thing that we are trying to get people to um, download, and that is do-it-yourself wedding invitations. So invitations, while it casts a very wide net, doesn't get us the people that we actually want. So the solution to this is to look at long-tail keywords. And those are keywords, uh, phrases of three or more words. These are more specific. Um, people are more likely to be interested in purchasing or downloading when they type in very specific phrases. So that's something important that we want to think about. So we go back to our campaign manager. Let me click on ad groups tab up here at the top. An ad group in Google AdWords is simply a way of organizing any group of keywords. Uh, what this allows you to do is, is target different aspects of your business. So in, in one ad group, I could have do-it-yourself type keywords. I could create a second ad group and, 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 put some, and put keywords in that ad group related to something completely different. But the thing that we want to make sure we do is in any given ad group have very tightly themed keywords that all relate to each other. This makes a big difference in how well our ad will rank on Google search. So once you've got some keywords and you've, you've added them to your ad group, it's time to start writing ads. Um, now there's a few best practices to look at as we think about writing ads. You have a very limited number of characters in your ads. They're comprised of a headline, two lines of description, and then a URL. So one of the best practices is to make sure that you get one of your keywords in your ad group into your headline and then one into the dis one of the lines of description. And just to show you why this is important, if we go and do a search on Google and I search again for DIY wedding invitations, I see right away that an ad pops up here at the top with this exact keyword phrase that I typed in. And that's why it's important to have a keyword phrase in the title. Because this is what someone was searching for. Your ad pops up and they see that's what I want and they're more likely to click on it. So as we start to think about writing ads, um, we want to make sure that our headline has that keyword phrase in it. Um, the other thing we want to think about as we write ads is the benefits and the features. So it's been proven that if we put features first and benefits second, we usually have a much lower click-through rate. But if we put benefits first and features second, our click-through rate is more likely to be higher. So one thing to think about is in your first line of description, putting a benefit, what it is that someone uh, is, is going to get out of this. The features are what they actually download. So in this case, um, the second ad there is a good example of this. Make your own wedding invitations. That's the benefit. Uh, the feature is the free template. So this is kind of how you structure your, your ads. Um, one other thing we should talk about here is the display URL versus the destination URL. The destination URL is actually the exact URL of the landing page, so you'd put that in there. The display URL is kind of a little bit like a dummy URL. It just redirects to the destination URL. But it's a way for you to customize uh, that URL a little bit and get another keyword in there. So in this example, we've got formalinvitations.com. 
slash free template. And it's just another way for me to show people what it is that this ad is giving them. One other uh, best practice is to capitalize every single word in your ad, um, even in the headline. The other important thing to think about is you've got your benefits, your features. You want to make sure you have a strong call to action. So in the second ad example here, we have download now. It could be learn more or visit our site. Something that will give people a direct action to take. So let's go back and create an ad. We want to click on the ads tab up here at the top. And then we want to click on the plus ad button. We want to choose text ad. And then we want to type in our ad. Now one thing to keep in mind is Google is a little strict with punctuation. Um, you're allowed to use one exclamation point in any given ad, but not two. If you use two, you, uh, your ad will get rejected. The other thing is um, you cannot use the word click. So in your call to action, if you wanted people to click now, um, Google doesn't allow that. I know Facebook does, but um, if you use the word click, they will disprove your ad and you'll have to change it. So then we want to put in our destination URL again, which is just our landing page URL. So I'm going to copy that and paste that into there. And then the display URL is again just going to be... And then I'm free to customize this end. I have a limited number of characters, but again, I want to let people know what it is they're getting a free template. So then once I do that, I'm going to click Save Ad. It's going to ask me to select an ad group up here so I can do that. I've got ad group number one. Go back down, click Save Ad, and there's my text ad showing up. And you do this uh, the same way for each ad. Um, you could target different keywords in different ads. And a, a great strategy is to have at least two ads. I believe that um, for the purposes of this class, you need to write f at least five ads. Um, one quick way to get a second ad is to simply click on this little arrow on the ad, click copy and edit, and then choose mobile. What that will do is create an ad, the exact same ad, but it will run primarily on mobile devices. Um, Another good thing to do is to just split test your ads. So create an ad, another ad um, that's exactly similar to one of these, but change the headline or change the punctuation. Just change one thing and then test those two ads together and see how they do. Uh, and the idea here is that you want to have a number of ads, see which ones perform really well, see which ones underperform, uh, pause the underperforming ones, and then continue to write ads to see if you can beat your best ad. That's how you'll increase your click-through rate, your clicks, and, and all of that. So one other thing we want to talk about um, with these campaigns is quality score. And quality score is related to keywords. So let's go back to the keyword tab. I want to click on columns here. Uh, for some of you, it might already be added. If you can see over here, it's added to this particular campaign. Uh, it's quality score here at the end. But if you don't have it added, um, I can show you how to do that. You click on columns, you click on customize columns, and then you go to attributes, and if, if quality score is over here, you would just click add, and then you would scroll down and click apply, and that will add that column. So quality score is important for a couple of reasons. Um, Google assigns this score to every single one of your keywords, and it's a score from 1 to 10. Obviously 10 being the best and 1 being the worst. Quality score is a measure of a few different things. It's a measure of how well your keyword relates to your ad. It's a measure of how well your keyword relates to your landing page. And it's a measure also of how good your click-through rate is on any given campaign. The important thing about quality score is it's a prime, primary factor in calculating where your ad will rank on any Google search result. So you really do want to target a quality score of five or higher. Uh, one way to increase those quality scores is again to make sure that you've got those keywords and your headline in your ad and your body copy and then even in your display URL um, to make sure that your landing page um, is matching your ads and your keywords. 
And then to look for those long tail keywords versus short tail keywords. So keyword phrases that are three or more words that are more specific. That will usually help to drive up quality score. And you want to target a quality score, if possible, of five or higher. It doesn't mean that your ads won't show for quality score of three, but you're more likely to get outbid if your quality score is low. And the important thing about quality score is that the higher the quality score is, Google rewards you and uh, makes it easier for you to win any given ad auction at a lower cost per click. And now the final thing you want to do, of course, now that you have all of these things in place, is to make sure you turn your campaign on. So you want to go up here to this little button underneath your campaign name, click it and click enable, and you are good to go. So that's an overview of getting a Google AdWords campaign up and running. Uh, we looked at choosing keywords, we looked at ad groups, and we looked at actually creating the ads, and we talked a little bit about quality score. So that gives you uh, enough to start your own campaign, and good luck to you.